Stories about ghosts, poltergeists, apparitions, and things that go bump in the night are as old as time itself. But capturing definitive proof of their existence has proved elusive until now. Modern technology from dash cams to mobile phones and CCTV surveillance means that investigators and witnesses are able to capture what they believe is genuine evidence of paranormal activity. Oh, it's breaking up! Those are aliens! We've enlisted a panel of experts to analyze some of the most exciting reports from across the globe. No way! Don't see how anybody could explain that any other way than paranormal. That is really bizarre. Have we finally been able to prove the impossible? This is Paranormal Captured. Tonight, we investigate an encounter with a poltergeist. Oh, my torch has just gone off. A medieval spirit manifests in a bar. I was gobsmacked when I saw that. And we have reports of apparitions in Asia. It doesn't look set up to me. What it is, is another question. To sort fact from fiction, we've brought together an expert panel of psychologists. I like to observe people's behavior. I'm very interested in how perception and memory work. And some of the most experienced investigators from the paranormal world. I would love to find out what it's like on the other side. I am on the lookout for undeniable proof. All hoping to see the paranormal captured on camera. Oh, gosh. Why am I worried? <laughs> Filming a full-bodied apparition is considered to be the pinnacle of ghost hunting. And our first sighting comes from San Carlos City in the Philippines in 2018. The footage was captured by cameras at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Fearful locals have come to believe the apparition is male and the spirit of someone with a grudge. When you look at the traffic and you look at the gait of the person or entity walking, it never loses its gait, it's always got the same steps going across that that i'd put up there <laughs> i would that bit of evidence um as in one of the unexplains reports of paranormal activity have been documented across the globe but some locations are more notorious than others one such place is Ye Old King's Head Pub in Chester, England, whose reputation as a haunted hotspot dates back centuries. So this is the main corridor of the hotel. This is the first place I ever experienced anything paranormal. This particular night, I stayed in room two. When I was getting into bed that night, there was a blatant knock on the door. I opened the door, nobody here at all. Once I come into the corridor, it didn't feel quite right. Felt like a different type of energy, so I grabbed my camera phone and I stood at the end of the corridor taking photographs. I came up with an image that, for me, and a lot of people, looks like a little girl standing there. That's when I started finding out the stories about the two children that was run around the corridors looking for the mother at night time. It could be light reflecting off something in a certain way. However, I mean, it is the height of a child and it does kind of look like a slight figure. The brain will scramble for meaning if there is something there that looks like a shape. So there is already a heightened awareness of a reality about it. And I think when you add a historical element to it, that somehow gives it credibility. To put your finger on it and say it's a little girl, um, I personally wouldn't do that, but he caught something. He's got something there. One of the things as an investigator, what you should be doing is taking 
three photographs in a row, which are your control photos. If you have an anomaly in one photograph and not in the other two, then yes, that could potentially be something. It's got to have more photos to, to be a, a definite yes, that's paranormal. It certainly is interesting, though. It's impossible to know when paranormal activity will occur, so most experiences are never caught on camera. But with CCTV now installed across towns and cities all over the world, cameras are recording 24 hours, seven days a week, increasing the chances dramatically. In Barnsley in the UK, antique dealer Daniel has begun to suspect other forces might be at work in his shop after a series of unexplained incidents have been captured on his in-store CCTV. Before we even opened to the public, things started to happen. I don't believe in ghosts, so it, I never put it down to like anything spooky. But then one thing led to another and it's sort of grown and grown, like things happening like month after month. The first recorded incident took everyone by surprise. When we first had CCTV fitted, the electrician, he phoned me up, he says, I've just been rewiring. He says, I've gone out for some more materials. He says, I've locked the shop up. There were no one else in. I've come back in, opened up. He says, there's glass everywhere. So he rewound the CCTV and it shows the cabinet door was already open and then just exploded. It didn't just sort of break in half and fall to the floor. It literally shattered and glass went everywhere. While the footage was captured in 2014, our experts have never seen these clips before. Is that the glass? Wow. But to actually create that would take a lot of kinetic energy. I would like to think that was um, poltergeist activity. There didn't seem to be anything that could cause that to happen. And even if there was a slight crack in the glass or anything, there wasn't anything around, the door didn't move. If there's not a massive shift in temperature, there should be no explanation for why that, that glass is suddenly shattering like that. I don't see how anybody could explain that any other way than paranormal. But this was the first of many unexplained events captured in the shop. It was a big object as well. It is actually happening while people are in the shop as well. You know, poltergeists, meaning noisy ghosts, are renowned for moving things around. And there seems to be a lot of things moving in this place, which, I mean, could be poltergeist activity. Antique dealer Andy, who trades from the shop, has also experienced unusual activity. I've had a lot of occasions where mirrors and pictures have come off walls and doors have opened by the cells. I'd say I'm a sceptic, but if I were quite honest, I'm coming round a bit because there's just too many things to explain that we can't explain away in this shop. I've never felt fear, but I've felt uneasy, especially when I've been walking around and I'm on my own and, and like all hairs on the back of your neck stand on end and on your arms and you get like that cold shivering feeling so, and it does happen quite a lot. But there is a lot of people that said they felt like somebody's tapped them on the back and tapped them on the head and things like that, and that happens on a regular basis. Customers have also witnessed things they can't explain. I came in here with my son and we stood here. My son likes gothic things, and he especially likes skulls. We saw this picture here and there's a great big skull on it. He said, Dad, I like that, I really like it. I said, what do you want to buy it? He said, I'm not quite sure. And he stood looking at it. And the picture then proceeded to come along the edge here and then went straight down and landed at his feet. I just couldn't believe it. If we come in on the morning and there's, say, a picture on the floor, I'll, if I get the chance, I'll rewind the CCTV and see if it's on camera. Nine times out of ten, it is on camera. Bit bizarre. It's, people say it's like air pressure, but there's a lot of lighter things than pictures which you would see moving in the same area, and that there's no movement on anything else. I still always look for a logical answer, but a lot of these things, there is no logical answer. 
So you just can't explain them. They're, they are unexplained. With events occurring in the shop almost every day, could one possible explanation for this activity be the paranormal? I don't believe that it's impossible, but for me, it's a question of weights of evidence, right? There's a lot of extra steps between CCTV footage of an object falling from a shelf and therefore there's some sort of like supernatural entity. This comes down to a question of the interpretation where if you really want there to be a ghost or a poltergeist there, then you could use those falling objects as evidence. As the current evidence is compelling but inconclusive, we've sent paranormal investigator Jane Harris to the shop to see if she can capture further proof for our experts to analyze. The subject of the paranormal will always be controversial. Hundreds of years ago, people took evidence from the fact that they would use a spirit board and they would get messages through, or they would get tables moving, knocks and sounds, and that was enough. But today, we're constantly turning more towards science, which, although a good thing, it moves the bar, because what people accept as evidence of the paranormal, it's very subjective, it's very personal, but it's constantly moving and evolving and changing. I think we're possibly moving closer to understanding a certain point, a certain degree of it, but I think ultimately it's the unexplained for a reason. And there are people who think that actually we aren't supposed to know everything, we aren't supposed to understand everything. Daniel. Hiya. Hi, I'm Jane Harris, Paranormal Investigator. Oh, nice to meet you. Do you mind if I have a quick look around on my own? No, help yourself. When looking at the CCTV footage, any one of those clips could potentially be explained by something natural, so vibrations or, or anything at all. But when you add them all together, and also customers and staff have experienced things in there, there are three areas to look at, really, when it comes to explaining what's happening. Either activity to do with the land, activity to do with the building, or any one of the array of objects that are in that place. Poltergeists usually move and manipulate objects, and that's certainly what we're dealing with at the Antique Centre. With the shop on lockdown, Jane and Daniel prepare for a long night ghost hunting. Paranormal events are defined as those that are beyond normal experience or scientific explanation. But as the 21st century unfolds, new technology means events that used to be dismissed as ghost stories are now captured on camera. In 2017 in Brazil, two security guards patrolling the grounds of a care center were disturbed by a loud noise. They decided to investigate and used a mobile phone to film their chilling discovery. As if you would go down there. I'm an investigator. I would be panicked walking up to that. My camera would be a bit shaky. People will always have this draw to all things strange and spooky and scary. And when it comes to your own fears, I mean, I was terrified of the dark for a really long time. And which, as an investigator, is not ideal. <laughs> not gonna lie. That looked compelling, but I'd have to revisit that several times and go, what was really at play there? When paranormal activity occurs, it can strike fear into those experiencing it. 
But for some, seeing a ghostly apparition is the start of a lifelong obsession. At Ye Old King's Head in the UK, landlord Harry has captured an intriguing light anomaly on camera. Eager to get more evidence, he invited paranormal investigator Paul Rowland in to try to capture more proof. My background has been engineering and electrical engineering, and then I moved into uh, CCTV alarms and security and recording. So that gave me a background into the knowledge of how cameras work. I started using a conventional car dash cam. Whatever had caused the camera to trigger, they would capture about five seconds of it, the actual event, and then five seconds afterwards, and then automatically stop. It's a nice little camera setup. We've got an everyday device here, and this guy's gone dash cam, ghost hunting, put the two together. So I started using this device in this room. Activate it, we walk out the room, leave it to do its own thing. After a night of recording in an empty room, Paul reviewed his footage. I'd noticed there was one clip that was very, very short, and that's extremely unusual. So when I looked into it closely, I realised it had actually captured something very, very unusual. It's a really quick clip, but you do see a cloaked figure walking past the camera and the camera distorts once you walk past as well. It moved very, very fast, far faster than we would as normal walking pace. There was no living people in the room here. The camera was pointed at the doorway, so it would have picked up any movement towards it by a living person. And the shake, to me, indicated it had been turned off by contact somehow. I was gobsmacked when I saw that. You could actually see something there, and then the camera go. You can clearly see the light anomaly come towards the camera, but then as it moves off camera before the camera actually moves, you see the shape. There could always be somebody on the other side of the camera moving it slightly. So I'm a little bit on the fence on that one. I would say that's genuine because the fact that it moves the camera, unless a massive lorry has suddenly gone past, but you would have constantly seen the camera shaking in previous footage as well. He's really thought this out and to have that, I mean, he seems very, very genuine to me. This is like a lone warrior out on a mission. And I like that, I like that. If you're listening, you can join my team. <laughs> in Barnsley in the UK, paranormal investigator Jane Harris believes an antique center in the north of England might be experiencing poltergeist activity. Poltergeists are a bit stronger than normal spirits, ghosts. They have the ability to draw energy and to use that energy either to communicate or to make people aware that they're there or to frighten them. And they do this usually by moving objects. Jane has brought along paranormal detection equipment that she hopes will entice the spirit or spirits to communicate. I'm loaded up with as much equipment as possible. Ideally, we'd like to capture more evidence than just visual. I'd like some voices, I'd like some taps and some sounds, and basically anything else we can use to just verify what's happening. But before she begins, something breaks. Guys, something potentially a bit strange has just happened. Come and have a look at this. So, my lantern has broken there and no, fallen there. Now, I use that all the time. I know it's right, heatproof. Yeah, yeah. Your spirits broke my lantern. It's a bit strange. Not convinced it's paranormal. It might be on CCTV. Well, let's check that yeah, out, sure, shall yeah, we? Yeah. Should we see if we've got yeah. something? I know they've had broken glass with the cabinet. So you would put two and two together and think, OK, this is a spirit that likes to break glass. Right, yeah, we'll be, oh, yeah. be on this one. Right, so... Something in this shop likes to smash glass. So, camera two. I'll just rewind it a touch. So, th That's there you are, like, Yeah, yeah. If you can just keep an eye on it while I fast forward. Check the torch here. There, that's only there. If it is, it wasn't lit for long, was it? That is a really short space of time, really, isn't yeah. it? So even if it wasn't heat-resistant glass, yeah, yeah. 
Well, in that amount if it of time, is a candle holder, it should be like heat resistant. Yeah. Fashion. How strange. Well, let's bear in mind that tonight glass might get broken. Yeah. Right. Well, again. Right. They went back and they reviewed the CCTV and made sure that they knew exactly when it happened with nobody around at the time. So to me, that validates it. And I think that's very important to, to validate. Jane and Daniel were now bed in for the night, hoping that if there is something else in the shop with them, it will attempt to make itself known. But before the investigation begins, more strange incidents occur. Oh. Is that OK, or...? No, my torch has just gone off. <laughs> Shall I turn back on? What happened? I put that down, switched on, right. yeah. to, to just beam across there. And as you turn, whichever lights you turned off, yeah, yeah. that went off as well. So... Weird. Yeah, well, let's... Uh... Oh, it's working, so let's try again. So you've here. actually got to physically push it in there's on a the button, back, Yeah, there's a button on the back. Things already happening when we're not right. around. Yeah, yeah. Things that we don't want to happen, things that are actually inconvenient to us. And that, yeah. I suppose, again, is typical of a poltergeist. So right. we haven't had anything strong yet, no. but possibly, you know, you never know. The timing of it when it actually goes out, when the other light goes out, that is quite compelling, um, I must say, you know. Um, so I would not put that down to faulty batteries. I would put that down to something obviously unexplained. It kind of seems to sort of suck the energy from it and then for a brief second, so it'll dim or it'll go off, which is another reason why people use torches and things as a tool to communicate. As Jane continues to set up her equipment, she encounters yet another setback. When I switch to night mode, right, so you can see this, I'm not going crazy. So it's got full battery, been charged. So now I'm going to go to night vision, low battery, and it goes off. That's interesting. That's another piece of equipment that's not been behaving itself. That happens a lot. Uh, usually means there's going to be some activity. You'll go with fresh batteries, you check them right before you start, and then something like that happens. You replace the batteries, they drain again. It can be a nightmare. A lot of the times when you are speaking of the spirit that potentially haunts the location, you know, when you're talking about them, it's almost as though they want to be a part of the conversation. So you do find that you will have increased activity. Jane has only just begun to look for tangible evidence of a poltergeist. But could a spirit already be making its presence known? I've got the sense that we're being watched since mm. coming in. And I get the distinct feeling that someone doesn't want me here. When witnessing paranormal activity for the first time, most people simply can't believe their eyes. But since phones became mobile and cameras are something we carry with us every day, filming an event as proof is now possible. So in the UK in 2015, when two friends were driving home from work and they saw something they couldn't explain, they decided to double back and get on camera the vision that caught their eye. Where was he? Just down here. He's there. There he is. What was that? What was that? Was that a figure? <laughs> oh my God. What, what was it? You definitely saw a figure uh, on the side of the road, but I mean, I couldn't make it out properly, because it was, I don't know. That's a weird one, that. I must have missed it. Did I, what? It taps into a very nice narrative. It's the build up to it. We're along the road for a bit and then figure and then cut. That's a very classic ghost story trope. You don't know if that's an actual person or, or apparition. It goes by so quickly. It's just weird. First of all, what would somebody be doing out in the dark at, in what looks like a secluded kind of location there? Paranormal? Mm, maybe not. Creepy? Definitely. <laughs> 
paranormal world is defined simply as unexplained phenomena experienced by others. And capturing evidence is a global preoccupation that continues to grow with advancements in modern technology. In the UK, at Ye Old King's Head in Chester, Landlord Harry and paranormal investigator Paul have captured what they believe is proof. My technology has changed over the years. I develop lighting systems that involve blue and ultraviolet light because they're at a higher energy end of the colour spectrum. The next layer of technology I added in was a pulse modulation. So as the light is actually vibrating as it's leaving the light source, and if it hits a target that it can resonate from, this is how I've captured the pictures of ghosts that I've got so far. During one investigation in the 17th century pub, Paul managed to capture some of his strongest evidence to date. We were sat in the back function room. I stood up and started taking photos. One photo was the beginning of the formation of the soldier. We've got a living person in the same photo as a spirit. That's quite important. And then the next photo was the black torso, which was hovering off the ground. There was no sign of head, limbs. You could see completely underneath it. He phoned me ecstatic this day. He goes, I've caught something, Harry. You need to see it. And when I saw it, to think that I'd actually seen that with my own eyes as well. There is an actual person stood in the same frame. So you can see how solid they are, and yet you can see through this apparition. I don't have an explanation for that. I don't think that could be the way light's reflecting, because that is quite a full figure. To see that standing next to him in the same shot, uh, is very compelling. The black shadow? Wow. We have customers that come in here and they tell me that all oh, the paranormal is a load of rubbish. The photo evidence reassured what I'd seen. I'm not going crazy, I did see something. And maybe the customers who are skeptics might believe a little bit more now. When you're looking to prove something, you can interpret kind of ambiguous information, say a bit of motion blur. People might see a face there in what's effectively noise. Your own kind of cognitive interpretations are coloring the sensory information that you're receiving. If I was there and I knew that no one was in that room and I'd seen that, yeah, I w I'd be over the moon with this kind of evidence. The Yol King's Head, absolutely awesome location. And there is some serious paranormal activity going on there that cannot be debunked. Now, I know the apparition that walks past the camera, that's awesome. The pictures, oh my word. I can't explain the stuff I've seen and the stuff I've experienced. I don't think anyone will ever get the real answer why there is things that reside in the building that you can't explain. In the north of England, Jane Harris is trying to determine if the unusual activity that's been plaguing an antique centre is paranormal. After a few technical hitches, Jane finally starts the investigation with shop owner Daniel. Sat in separate rooms in the dark, they are unable to hear or see each other. Communication is through walkie-talkies only. Can you hear me OK, Daniel? Yeah, fine. OK, what I'd like you to do is just ask the spirits if they're here to affect me. So I'm going to sit now um, in darkness. If anything happens, I'll call you and we'll sort of try to confirm to each other whether you did actually ask for anything to happen. It can be touching me or moving something in the room, making a sound, just general kind of things, but hopefully they might like to approach me on my own in the dark. OK, tell me when to start. OK, ready when you are. If there's anything or anyone here, can you make anything move where Jane is in the back room? Can you touch the doll? Can you tap Jane on the shoulder? Did you just ask for anything to 
come near me or by the pram or move around the pram or come to that side of me at all? Yeah, I asked it if it could move the doll or if it could touch you on the shoulder like it touched the customer last week. OK, that's, in that's interesting. I've just had... Um, it felt like a breeze, like something on my right-hand side, um, which is right next to the pram. I felt like someone was almost like leaning over the pram. That's weird. Yeah. OK, carry on. Tap on Jane's shoulder. Tap on her head. Daniel, there's not anything going on in the room, but I keep feeling quite cold on one side or the other, and I'm sure I felt a bit like something touched my hair not too long ago. Does that make sense to you, or is that completely different to what you've been asking? No, I actually told it to tap you on, on the shoulder or, or even tap you on your head. Daniel, you've not asked anything to do with the temperature in the room, have you? Because it's just gone down from 50 to 46. Four degrees oh, instantly. I watched it happen. Oh, that's very interesting. A sudden, sharp four-degree drop. OK, very, very interesting. Usually, if there's a drop in temperature, that means that there's likely something nearby. She seems to feel the difference in the temperature, and she feels something next to her. So when a spirit is trying to manifest itself, it will draw the energy from the surrounding area. So the atmosphere automatically, when they draw that energy, becomes quite cold. So it is a known thing that we look for as investigators. I've had this. Uh, actually happen um, where you, you, you get a sudden temperature drop of like five degrees. You know, I've done Ouija, for instance, and trying to make contact, and all of a sudden, someone came on the board. I said, can you reveal yourself? And it literally went S-A-T-A-N. And I was like, sorry, I said, <laughs> are you telling me you're Satan? And as I said that, the temperature plummeted. Jane and Daniel have been investigating in the antique centre for three hours. They've already encountered things they can't explain. Hopefully, this is just a taste of what's to come. While paranormal investigators may have specialist cameras to help them capture activity, the rest of us have to rely on what we have in our pocket. In Mexico in 2018, Francisco Hernandez was finishing his shift when he heard a mysterious noise. As per the airline's protocol, he went to investigate and decided to record his findings. There's a number of rational explanations behind what's going on there. It's the simplest one is, is the shadow with his trick of light coming off his, his camera. No, mommy. <clears throat> wow. Evolutionarily speaking, it's very good to have the ability to kind of fill in the gaps, especially when you're getting sparse informational inputs. You should make some assumptions about what is happening rather than just kind of throw up your hands and say, oh, can't possibly know this. But while that is usually a great and effective way of handling your environment, sometimes it can glitch. One of the main reasons I do investigating is for the adrenaline rush of it. Because when something happens, I mean, your flight or fight mode kicks in. You know, maybe you think you see a shadow figure walk past or whatever, and your brain kind of scrambles to find a logical explanation. And when it can't, I mean, that it's an adrenaline rush. Whilst certain locations are known to attract paranormal activity, it's also believed that spirits can be drawn to people and objects. In Hinkley in the UK, Museum curator Neil collects haunted artefacts and wanting to advance knowledge in the field, he set up a research centre that is open to the public and investigators. 
I wanted other people to join in with my research into haunted objects. I think the paranormal works on frequencies and different levels, so everyone picks up on different things. I don't claim that every item in the centre is haunted as such. Not everything's got a spirit attached to them, but they've all got energy from previous owners. I didn't want a museum where things would be behind glass. So people can come in, they can sit in the wheelchair, they can sit in the rocking chair, or they can hold items. Neil regularly opens his doors to teams undertaking investigations. One particular room in the museum seems to attract more activity than others. At the back of the centre, we've got a room which is very atmospheric, we call the sounds room. We focus on building the energy up in that room. In here, the table seems to be a focal point for spirits. The table has actually moved on its own a few times, and also when there's been members of the general public here. Um, so when a team came in, we asked them to focus some of the time on the table to see if they can actually catch it moving. They did a live feed from the centre. They started off in the main room, and then they did the, a session in the sounds room. They were calling out for spirit activity. Uh, they all lifted their hands off the table. Holy <laughs> I actually watched this live. When it happened, my first thing was, look under the table. I want to see where everyone's feet are. Did somebody kick the table? Did someone push it? Did someone move it in any way? However, their reaction when that happened, you can't fake that. It was such a genuine shock. It's exciting, your adrenaline starts pumping. That's what you're after. The table clearly moves a good couple of inches. If things are fakes or someone's actually pushed the table, the reactions wouldn't be the same. The table does clearly move on the camera, but you don't really see the base of the table because we don't really have the angle to see if someone's, say, either deliberately or accidentally got their foot on the base of that table. You kind of see the camera pan straight down towards everyone's feet, and it doesn't look like anyone pushed it. What I would have done, I would have had a locked off camera under that table because I would want to have seen everything before I even attempted that experiment. The way that it moves, it doesn't look like someone's just kind of kicked it. It kind of slides across, which is really interesting. I can only imagine that table weighs a couple of hundred pounds. To get that to move would take a hell of a lot of energy or at least two or three spirits involved <laughs> to pick that up. I've never been a fan of seances or table tipping until I experienced table tipping that like I've never experienced before. I was the last one on the table. The table was rocking and moving and I lifted my hands off of it and it still moved into the corner. So now I'm a little bit of a believer. In the Antique Centre, paranormal investigator Jane Harris and shop owner Daniel are trying to determine if a poltergeist is present. Earlier in the evening, Jane had left out various types of equipment. This is an ovulus. And what this does, basically this manipulates the airwaves, so it will pick up on words. Yeah. If spirits are trying to communicate with us, it will almost act as a receiver. Right. And it will receive the information and we will hear the word and also see the word come up on there. Suddenly, four hours into the investigation, the ovulus springs into action. Not to alarm anyone, but it just said kill three times as I walked down there. If an ovulus says the same word more than once, it is likely something using the, the energy to, to form a word. I do think that if there are spirits there, they do have a sense of humor as well. So they will try and say things to scare you. I have seen the ovulus work in incredible ways before, but I've also experienced the ovulus coming out with complete garbage, to be honest, stuff that just doesn't make sense. You are looking for intelligent answers at the time that you are calling out. Can you speak to me again? Try to say, try to say something. Here, 
Sophia. Try to say something. Can you say your name? Can you say your name? Is there more than one person here? It seems like whenever we try to directly communicate, nothing wants to. As the investigation draws to a close, Jane decides to introduce a new bit of kit, the spirit box. Now that's quite strange. Mm. So we've just settled down to have a bit of a last ditch attempt at some communication. And this is going off and on again. We'll turn this off and we'll see if we can hear anything actually in the shop. Try to make an obvious, clear sound now. They say that spirits don't have much energy and they have to try and use ours and draw on that. Um, we've had lots of technical problems this evening and batteries yeah. going and all sorts, so that could potentially be an explanation for that. Mm. But they reach a point where their energy's gone and that's it. Yeah. And you can't have any more communication or anything at all. In the few hours that I've been here, enough has happened for me to be pretty sure, actually, that something's going on here paranormally. Once the light's out, I think your mind can play tricks on you. So the slightest touch, you think, did something touch me. The amount of things that have happened in just our shop, I am slightly getting to be a, a bit of a believer. With the investigation over, it's time to analyse the findings. There's obviously something going on there that's not normal. That doesn't mean to say it's haunted, but it's not normal. So it's got full battery, no battery, and it goes off. The sudden temperature drop was, was quite a big thing. So it's just gone down from 50 to 46, four degrees. Instantly, I watched it happen. When you look at all the activity that they're experiencing in the shop and all the things moving about and that, do I think that there's possibly something paranormal there? Yes. There are certain elements of it that I would say are unexplainable. I personally wouldn't label it haunted because once you label a location haunted, then everyone gets into the mindset that you're dealing with a paranormal event every time something goes wrong. <laughs> you know, the toilet flushes on its own, it's like, it's the ghost. Would I say it's haunted? The simple answer is I don't know. But as a paranormal investigator, would it interest me? Yeah, most definitely. I really love to go there and investigate. It's very intriguing. I'm still very open to the idea that Barnes Antique Centre is haunted purely because in a short space of time, I experienced a few things which I couldn't explain. I don't necessarily think it's a poltergeist, but I do think there is some activity in that building, definitely. And I think we haven't seen the last of footage from that center. Whether it's ghosts, aliens, or other paranormal phenomena, as encounters happen across the globe, evidence will continue to be captured by witnesses and investigators. But will it be enough to explain the unexplainable? <laughs> <laughs>